A young girl is on a road trip with her family. She spots a wolf and her dad looks to the side to look but doesn't see it. They're met with a truck and they collide, leaving the young girl unconscious on the ground. The young girl, Nika, arrives at an orphanage where everyone greets her. Margaret, the headmistress, explains the basic rules she must follow. Nika's luggage is taken away and Margaret orders her to surrender her necklace since personal items aren't allowed. Nika pleads that it's her mother's necklace, but Margaret reminds her of the rules and orders a boy Rigel to take it from her. A girl named Adeline escorts Nika to her room, and Nika asks her if she's been at the orphanage for long. Adeline reveals that her pale appearance makes her look ill, which is why no one wants to adopt her. The girls agree to become best friends, and soon enough, they grow up together at the orphanage. Adeline informs Nika that her adoptive parents have arrived, and Nika promises her she'll visit often. Adeline tells her never to look back, and Nika gives her pet mouse to Adeline. Nika can't believe she's finally getting adopted as she goes towards her new family, reflecting on all the struggles she endured as a child at the orphanage. Margaret reminds her of the rules she has been taught and that it's only a trial period because custody can be withdrawn anytime, and she could return to the orphanage if she causes trouble. They're about to leave but stop when they see Rigel play the piano. The couple, Anna and Norman, decide to adopt Rigel, and Margaret warns them that he's a troublemaker. Norman assures her they can handle it and mentions the trial period. Nika can't believe she'll be living with Rigel again, but can't bear to hate him since she's accustomed to living with him. They arrive at their new home, and their parents show them around. A piano is spotted in the living room, and Norman explains their son used to play. Nika and Rigel get comfortable in their new rooms and receive their uniforms for school. Rigel pops a pill and hides something in the drawer, and then Nika appears in the doorway. Nika tells him she wants things to go well with Anna and Norman, but Rigel shuns her and says to stay away from him and his room if she wants things to work out. The atmosphere is awkward and tense at the dinner table, so the parents try to start some small talk. They mention their occupations, and Norman asks the two if they got along with each other at the orphanage. Nika tells them they're like siblings since they grew up together, and Rigel agrees, sneaking his hand under the table to grope Nika's thigh. Nika excuses herself to go to the bathroom, then Anna asks about Rigel's name. Rigel explains that Margaret named him since he's never met his parents. Anna and Norman become speechless, then Rigel also excuses himself from the table. Nika feels overwhelmed about Rigel, who appears behind her. Rigel is smug and says Anna and Norman might change their minds once they realize how much Nika hates him. Nika gets in bed, but is reminded of her past in the orphanage. Young Nika has injuries on her wrists, and suddenly a young boy enters to alert them that Rigel is sick again. The kids watch as Margaret tries to soothe Rigel, and Nika has flashbacks of her younger self getting her wrists strapped. She wakes up from her nightmare, breathing heavily. Nika and Rigel arrive at their new school, and Rigel takes Nika in his arms to prevent her from getting hit by a car. Rigel receives looks from girls because he's just that good looking, while Nika meets another student named Billy. When the girls walk off, a guy named Phelps beside the lockers tells his friend he'll get the new girl to sleep with him in a week. Rigel walks into the hall glancing at them. Nika arrives at her classroom and the professor praises her for her good grades. Commotion can be heard from a distance, causing the professor and the students to check it out. Two boys are fighting each other in the hall, and it's none other than Rigel and Phelps. The professor dismisses them and warns them they'll get detention if they fight again. Anna enters Nika's room to ask why Rigel didn't join them for dinner and wonders if he's having difficulty at school. But Nika explains he's just tired. Nika checks up on Rigel, asking him why he decided to agree with the adoption since he always rejected anyone who tried to adopt him back then. Nika tries to help him with his injury, but Rigel warns her not to touch him. Nika asks what will happen if she does, and Rigel says he won't be able to stop himself and leaves. Is it just me, or is it getting hot in here? The next morning, Nika delivers Rigel his laundry. When she enters his room, he isn't there, but she finds his bottle of pills on the dresser. Nika opens the drawer but stops when Rigel appears in the doorway. She explains she was only doing what Anna asked her to, and they should try to be kind to each other. Rigel calls her a hypocrite, trying to be kind to someone she despises, especially when Nika thinks he's the bad guy. Nika says things are different now that they're away from the orphanage, but Rigel tells her to stop clinging on to happy endings. At school, Nika is approached by a cutie named Lionel. He says he's curious about her, and Nika finds a snail on his shoulder and removes it. She rambles about snails while Lionel looks at her in awe. 
He introduces himself but gets interrupted by Rigel as he walks by. Lionel asks if she and Rigel are a thing, but Nika shakes her head. Billy pulls Nika away for their test, leaving Lionel and Rigel to look at each other. The family goes shopping together. When Nika undresses, she struggles to unzip and calls for Anna's help. Rigel's hand reaches for her back, slowly unzipping and touching her skin. Nika turns around, but he's nowhere to be found, and Anna comes with a belt to place on her waist. As Anna buckles the belt, Nika gets flashbacks of getting strapped into a bed when she was young. She has a panic attack, and her family tries to calm her down. She remembers how Margaret would take advantage of her fear of the dark and strap her into a bed in the darkness as punishment. The following day, Nika tells herself she doesn't need to be afraid because she has Anna, even if she can't tell her about the past. Nika visits the garden to see Anna. Nika finds her injured from roses, so she takes out a marker to color Anna's band-aid, just like she did with her mom. Nika asks about the shortage of roses, and Anna reveals many were bought for Garden Day. Nika is unaware of Garden Day, so Billy explains that students anonymously give a rose to whomever they want. Each color has a meaning, and students leave their lockers unlocked for incoming roses. When their friend Mickey opens her locker, several roses have already been placed. Billy opens hers to find a white rose, and when it's Nika's turn, she sees a black rose in her locker. Mickey explains the meaning of it, an obsessed, tormented love. Nika rushes home to enter Rigel's room. She asks him if he was the one who gave the rose to her, but he takes it away. Nika tries to retrieve it from him, but she's pushed onto his bed, Rigel getting on top of her. They almost kiss, but Anna calls for Nika. Anna tells her there's a cute boy outside, and she steps out to see Lionel. Lionel returns her book and asks her out for ice cream. Rigel watches them in annoyance from above as Nika leaves with Lionel. Lionel asks about Nika's parents, and Nika mentions her parents were biologists. Rigel is at the piano but starts shaking, so he takes a pill. He hears voices outside and sees Nika return home with Lionel in the rain. Lionel confesses he's attracted to her and will see her tomorrow. Nika enters the house to find Rigel playing the piano. She looks at him intently, thinking she doesn't find Rigel evil in her heart and doesn't want to give up on him. Rigel clutches his head and Nika approaches him to help. Rigel bursts out, saying not to touch him, but Nika only expresses concern. Rigel asks if she hates him, to which she asks if he wants her to hate him. Rigel agrees and storms off. Nika watches him walk away, telling herself she doesn't hate him, but wants to understand him. Nika is eating dinner alone when she gets a message from Lionel. It's a video of him with an injured face, claiming Rigel attacked him for no reason. Rigel arrives home with similar injuries, and Nika shows him Lionel's video. She slams Rigel on the door and asks what she's done to him for him to act this way. Rigel falls to the ground as he's burning up. Nika undresses him on his bed, then retrieves her phone when Anna calls. Anne informs her they're stuck in traffic because of the storm, and Nika explains Rigel has a fever and asks for medicine. Nika gets medicine from the bathroom and takes care of Rigel. She trails her hand down his abdomen, and Rigel asks her to stay. They get close to each other, and Rigel buries his face on her chest, kissing and caressing her skin. In a flashback, Adeline calls for Margaret as she watches Rigel play the piano. Adeline informs her of the new girl's arrival, so Margaret kisses Rigel's cheek and tells him to continue playing before she leaves. When Margaret orders Rigel to take Nika's necklace, he keeps it in a small box. During lunch at the orphanage, Nika approaches Rigel, who doesn't look well. She gets in trouble and Margaret takes her away, but Rigel cuts himself to distract Margaret and set Nika free. Adeline knows Rigel kept the necklace and realizes he likes Nika. Rigel asks her not to tell Nika since it's better for Nika to think Rigel hates her. In the morning, Rigel gets touchy with Nika. Nika rushes to get out of bed as Anna and Norman return home. Nika enters her room and gets a call from Lionel, but she doesn't answer. Nika spends more time with her friends and barely talks to Lionel. They spend time at Mickey's house, reviewing for tests, and Nika excuses herself to the bathroom. Mickey walks over to Billy's sleeping figure to kiss her, and Nika walks in to see. Mickey tells Nika to pretend she didn't see anything and not to tell anyone. Nika realizes Mickey's the one who places the white rose every year in Billy's locker. Nika encourages her to confess, but Mickey fears ruining their friendship and losing Billy. Nika is walking outside when she's approached by Lionel. He complains they haven't talked in a month, and she's constantly avoiding him. When Nika asks what Lionel is doing there, he replies he likes her and asks for Rigel to stop interfering between them. Nika prepares to leave, but Lionel stops her, causing her to drop her shopping bag. Broken glass can be heard, 
and Lionel says he'll buy her another one. Unfortunately, it was last in stock and a gift for Rigel's birthday. Nika returns home to see visitors and sits at the table with Anna, her friend Dalma, and her daughter Asia. Asia asks her why Nika was an orphan until she was 16, and Dalma gets upset. Before Nika can answer, Rigel joins them at the table. The doorbell rings and Nika finds Adeline at the door. They hug, and Adeline explains she was able to look for a job since she's almost 18 and was invited by Anna. Anna brings a cake for Rigel and announces they'll be officially part of the family by tomorrow. Asia scoffs and says they're trying to replace their deceased son, Alan. Asia is unhappy about the situation, and Anna tells her they're all trying to move on. Anna explains she wants to share love with the orphans who deserve it, and Asia is in pain because she yearns for Alan's love and can't move on. Nika speaks with Adeline alone and mentions how she feels she doesn't belong with the family because of her past. Adeline encourages her to tell them about the abuse, but Nika doesn't want her adoptive parents to think she's broken and useless. Adeline reveals that Margaret hasn't been the same since Rigel left. Adeline suggests they press charges against Margaret, but Nika refuses, unable to face her past. Adeline begs her to give a testimony since Nika was treated the worst. Anna enters to tell Nika the guests have left and apologizes for Asia. Adeline prepares to leave and hugs Nika goodbye. Outside, Adeline asks Rigel why he doesn't want to tell Nika the reason why he joined them. Rigel doesn't want to take Nika's family away from her and Adeline tells him he must let Nika know that he held her hand in the dark, not Adeline. At night, Nika approaches Rigel, who's playing the piano. She says she doesn't have a present, but is willing to give or do anything for him. Rigel tells her to sit still, licking the pastry powder off near her lips. The doorbell rings and Nika sees Lionel standing outside in the rain. He confesses he can't stop thinking about her and hates that she's living with Rigel. Lionel knows there's something between them and reminds her they'll be siblings soon. Nika pushes him away and returns to Rigel, who's crying in his room. Rigel tells her to return to Lionel since he has no place in her life. Nika assures him she isn't going anywhere, and Rigel starts kissing and caressing her body. Nika confesses she wants to be with him, and Rigel stops, telling her to keep believing in fairy tales because he can't be what she wants. The following day, Nika leaves with Billy to prepare for the school dance. Billy mentions she found out Phelps gave the white rose to her, leaving Nika and Mickey to glance at each other. Mickey confesses it's her giving the rose every year, and Billy gets offended, thinking Mickey does it to mess with her. Mickey admits she's in love with Billy, who silently walks out. Meanwhile, Anna checks up on Rigel, who has something to tell her. That night, Rigel places the box with Nika's necklace in her room. At the dance, Lionel approaches Nika to apologize and ask for a dance. After dancing all night, Nika becomes dizzy and Lionel takes her to an empty classroom. They start kissing, and Nika tells him she's feeling better to return. Lionel forces himself onto her, but Rigel arrives to knock some sense into him. Lionel runs away, leaving Nika and Rigel to have a heartfelt moment with each other. They start making out and undress each other. On their way home, they find Lionel in his car. Lionel calls them disgusting and says they should only see each other as siblings, threatening to reveal their relationship. Nika and Rigel run away as Lionel chases them with his car. They jump off the bridge, dropping into the water, and Rigel sinks. Nika wakes up to Adeline's presence at the hospital. Anna and Norman walk in, and Nika asks about Rigel. Anna explains they're running tests on him, and the doctor comes in. He explains that Rigel protected Nika during the fall, and now he's in a coma. The doctor also mentions a pre-existing condition with Rigel, a tumor in his brain, and is surprised he hasn't been operated on before. Anna delivers news that Rigel rejected the adoption and has returned to Margaret's care. She gives Nika a box that Rigel left for her, revealing her mother's necklace. When Nika visits Rigel, she sees Margaret in the hallway. Margaret says she shouldn't have let anyone take Rigel away from her and blames Nika for his coma. Margaret forbids Nika to see Rigel and demands she leave. Nika decides to push the charges against Margaret. Peter rejects his testimony at the trial in fear of Margaret. When it's Nika's turn to speak, the prosecutor mentions Rigel rejecting the adoption and asks why he would if there's abuse at the orphanage. Nika explains that Rigel wasn't abused since Margaret treated him like her own son. She's asked if she's in love with Rigel, to which she admits. The prosecutor presses on, overwhelming Nika, and she leaves the courtroom. Nika calms herself in the bathroom, and Anna checks on her for comfort. The trial continues, and Nika speaks out about everything that happened. She finishes her statement, earning applause from the audience, and rips off the bandages on her fingers. Nika runs out with her newly found freedom, 
the trauma and pain from the orphanage no longer holding her back. Nika runs to Rigel's hospital room and informs him of the good news. She cries as she expresses her feelings for him. Nika falls asleep but wakes up from Rigel's fingers moving. He looks at her, finally awake, and Nika feels grateful for everything she's endured and has been blessed with. In the end, both Nika and Rigel find their happily ever after. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.